Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a long overdue another installment into the Table 500 series of uh, duels that I do, where I just play less than stellar decks, me and my opponent as well. Uh, we just take a break from like the meta nonsense, looking at, looking at things into the future or anything like that, and we just sit back and we just try to play stuff that we think that we might enjoy. And so this is one of those decks. This is a deck that, uh, if you're, if any of you are, you know, have been around on this channel for any sort of lengthy amount of time, you will have known that I've played Duskbots quite a lot in different periods of time, because I just, like, love the overall, like, amount of, <laughs> of just plays that this deck has in terms of raw power and raw power output. Like, uh, like the fact that you can just put huge amounts of damage on board is incredibly insane. Uh, so this is a, this is a deck called uh, Deskbot Symphonics or Symphonic Warrior Deskbots uh, that I'm trying and testing out. Main purpose is to basically use additional normal summons off of your Symphonic Warrior mics uh, with your Symphonic Warrior guitar summoning it out of your deck, obviously. And then you're able to either go into Symphonic Warrior drums, which can make itself an Earth attribute, which will let you go into Naturia Beast with Deskbot three. Or, you can use Deskbot 3 to summon Deskbot 5 out of your deck, summon a Mikes out of your deck, uh, and then basically have some really good interactions that yield you into Cyber Dragon Infinity plays, going Nova into Infinity. Usually, if you have Guitars plus Deskbot 3, you usually go Deskbot 3, summon Deskbot 2, Deskbot 2 gets you a search for another Deskbot 3, and then you use Guitars to discard a card, summoning your Mikes and then you can summon Deskbot 3 and go into your Deskbot 5. So it yields a lot of actual like board presence because you end up with a Deskbot 2 which is pumping the Cyber Dragon Infinity up by 500 and then you have two copies of Deskbot 3 which can both pump with effects to you know get larger. So it's a pretty good like OTK push with the added protection of Cyber Dragon Infinity. It's also just a strong uh, turn one play in general to be able to make Cyber Dragon Infinity plus backing up with any of these trap cards. Uh, but essentially, this is a, this is just a conceptual deck idea that I wanted to play for a video or two. Uh, and it's something that I think could possibly, you know, have some rogue merit in the future. Deskbots have had some success in the past on the uh, regional level as a rogue deck. And with the Symphonic cards, like, they, they just, these cards are just perfect for, like, breathing life into decks that need life breathed into them, essentially. Even like this deck, when this deck technically only has three starter cards, like true starter cards going first in the form of Deskbot 3, and then you're just trying to use base to dig into Deskbot 3s, uh, and then you have Deskbot 4, which becomes an additional starter card when you're going second, uh, stuff like that. Because this, this becomes an additional starter card on any turn that you have a battle phase and are able to stick this card. This also just deals with like any card in the game. Low key, this card deals with almost every single monster threat in the game because of how big it can get. Like you can send Deskbot 6 and boost it by 3k. Uh, and then it can also be boosted by Deskbot 3 to be bigger than that. Uh, so like <laughs> this card is just the MVP as far as dealing with things. Uh, because like it's almost impossible to kill this thing in battle. You have to deal with it in some other way or else like you're just going to keep sending cards uh, and then you're going to be getting advantage off of it that your opponent's going to be giving you. But Symphonic Warrior, Guitars, and Mics are fantastic cards. Getting the additional Normal Summon is huge. The fact that they're machines also just synergizes with the archetype. Uh, overall, I just think it's a nice cool little concept and I wanted to play it for a video or two like I've already said. But anyway, that's enough rambling on this. I have no idea what I'm going to be playing against with my opponent, but he's also going to be playing something rogue. Um, I've let the, I've let anyone play like new cards that they want, so he might be playing something with new cards in it. Uh, but regardless, let's not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into the first game and see what sort of table 500 shenanigans we can get into with this deck and see how much damage we can put out. That's what I want to do. I just want to try and hit the highest numbers I can possibly hit without Deskbot 9 and see what those are. But anyway, let's just jump straight into the game. Alright, so going into the first game, my opponent gets to start, and he's playing Glad Beasts, and he's playing with the new support coming out uh, in the form of Gladiator Beast Noxious, uh, so that, like, he can just have a better chance. I told people that they could play with new cards, I had no problem with that, so it's whatever. Uh, but so, I end up drawing Deskbot 2 for my turn, I had Deskbot 3 plus Machine Dupe in hand, and like, that's fantastic, but I drew a Deskbot 2, and I was like, shit, I really wanted to get the other two out of my deck, so that I could just Twin Twister away like this Mike's, and then it would be better, but... After drawing the Despot 2, I would have just, you know, I decided that it was just better to Twin Twister the, uh, the Despot 2 out of my hand so that I could use the Soul Charge later to potentially get some searches. But so, he's playing Glad Beast, so I commit my board in such a way to where he's not going to be able to attack any of the things that I control. Uh, if he attacks the, uh, the Centauria, the stuff's just going to die or get bounced before it has a chance to tag out. And if he attacks the Despot 3, it'll just pump itself up to 2500, and then that'll just be pretty easy to deal with. So I'm pretty much just cucking him. He's not able to attack me, which is the entire point of his deck. So he's very, very much 
the victim of a mismatch on this front as far as table 500 things go. But so as you can see here, I elect not to attack. I bait out his strike by using my despot 3 in the main phase because I felt like he might have a strike or something face down. And so I decided to bait it out beforehand using the despot 3 before I attack and it does stick. So like, that's great. So I tribute summon the Centauria. Uh, and then Soul Charge back all my Despot 2s, getting 3 searches and then make Cyber Dragon Infinity and suck up his monster. And then he just can't win from there. So next game, he gets to start. He starts with a Tinky, a Laquari, and a Set. And so, at this point, not really sure what we're having to deal with here as far as play lines. So I just throw the Despot base out there, expecting to be able to shuffle away some of these duplicate cards in my hand. But it gets an MST, and so I'm like, okay, this works. This is easy for me to deal with. So I set my scales with the Mikes and the, uh, and the Despot 6. Pendulum summon the 2 which searches for a 3, which then allows me to summon a Despot 4, because I want to keep that Despot 4 in my hand, so that Despot 4 can kill his monster, summon 2 from Grave, that it gets dumped with uh, the Despot 4's effect, and then to summon the uh, Despot 4 out of my hand. So that allows me to make a rank 4 and a rank 2 while getting a search. Uh, so I end up searching, making a gear gang, searching for my, uh, for my guitars and all that sort of stuff, and just ultimately just yielding a lot of advantage out of the situation. Again, I've got my setup to where he can't attack anything, he literally can't attack anything, even though he's popping cards with Bear. There's nothing that he can really do about anything that I'm doing to his board, to his game plan. There's nothing that he's able to do. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm free reign to just go over every single like play that I want to do because of the fact that he has no back row. And he doesn't seem to be playing Zoo in his deck. He seems to be playing Firefist Bear as a form of spot removal, which I don't think is actually a proper way that he should be building the deck. I mean, I understand he wanted to keep it like, he wanted to keep it rogue-esque, but I still think that it would have still been kind of rogue, at least a rogue status, to put Zodiac in the deck as well, because even though it's still got Zoo cards in it, it's still a Gladiator Beast deck. Let's be completely real. It's definitely power creeped out. And Noxius is one of the best support cards that the deck has gotten, but I'm not going to be attacking you directly, knowing full well that you could have access to Gladiator Beast Noxius without having something like a Cyber Dragon Infinity on the board to negate it. Like, that's just not something that I'm going to do. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid enough to fall into these sorts of traps. Uh, so, I'm just basically just giving him a victimization of, like what I said before, a mismatch as far as how this matchup is played and goes. Uh, but so he tries to attack with his Darius here, thinking that I can't pump like other monsters at will. It's like, ah, oh, I'm going to attack over this Despot 2 and it's going to be great. Nah, fam. <laughs> we, we can pump that with Despot 3 too. He can pop other, he can pump other cards. Um, so like, it just throws his Darius into it. And so he tries to use a Noxious, and like I said, I'm not going to be attacking directly with anything if I don't have a Cyber Dragon Infinity on the board, because Infinity can negate that card. So we're just sitting here and punishing him over and over again, because my entire deck doesn't allow his deck to essentially function as far as a, as far as a game plan goes. Uh, but so next game, Despot base gets met with an MST. I then twin twister two other sets. One of them ends up being a strike and one ends up being a defensive tactic. So he's basically wabakooed for the turn. And then I just use my uh, guitars to discard soul charge and summon mics out of my deck. That's the interesting thing is that with guitars summoning mics, you have another alternative play that can sort of carry you because even though it's not ideal, if all you have is guitars and traps, that's still a second turn Cyber Dragon Infinity because you can just summon two copies of Mike's out of your deck. But so, he summons a Darius and he attacks and flips Wabaku. Or he doesn't summon a Darius, he just has it from the last turn. He attacks and flips his last face down, which is Wabaku. And when he tries to tag out his Darius, I just strike it. So I end up like incredibly plussed on the card interactions there. Uh, so it's just, it's pretty fine. And I'm a top deck king in top deck Despot 3 and just make a Naturia Beast. Uh, so, just things happen in there. Uh, well, he Dimensional Barriered Calling Pendulum in response to my Guitar's effect, uh, so there was nothing I could really do about it, because I can only summon the tuner out of my deck off the Guitar's, and so might as well make a Naturia Beast, but he top decks a GB, attacks into my Despot 2 that's not protected by anything, and then goes into Mermelio, but it's too far gone for him at this point. He has no back row to back him up, and I'm just able to summon the other copy of Mike's out of my deck, but so... Going into what I believe is the last game, if I remember correctly, as far as these recordings go, uh, he's just being victimized and brutalized by Twin Twister nearly as much as I do, and nearly as much as I get brutalized by it. I think that it might be having some uh, some nightmares at this point. But anyway, I summon Despot 3, use it to summon Despot 4 out of my deck, which I just discarded. Um, I discarded a Despot 4 off my Twin Twister, and so then I use Despot 4 to dump Despot 3 to my graveyard. Uh, Should have, in retrospect, used Despot 3 to pump my Despot 4 and then send Despot 2. 
because I had to send Despot 3 or higher to let it get over that Laquari um, at this point. So it was a bit of a problem in that regard. Uh, but still, it ends up just working out in my favor because I'm able to summon another Despot 3 and like that means that I've got two things that can pump. Unfortunately, the Despot 3 is in defense mode, so it means that it's going to be you know a problem if he summons and attacks me with anything. But I've got Solemn Warning, so it's perfectly fine. But look at this board. 17,600 damage is what I've got on this board. I make my Despot 2 8,500 attack, and then I just don't attack with it. I attack with everything else for game because the other three were, were uh, 91 by themselves. Like, look at that. Look at all that damage. <laughs> look at all that shit. That's one of the reasons I really love this deck is because of the damage that this thing puts out. Like, that last turn was literally just... We're just going to put 17,600 damage on the board and we're going to attack you with all of it after I've warned you and you don't have any response. Uh, but so yeah, I just victimized him with one, a mismatched mashup, and two, uh, just having those su super, super spicy twin twisters at <laughs> literally perfect times. He keeps setting his Raigeki as well, so like he could have used Raigeki to bait things, but I just kept twin twistering it away. I guess he just didn't want to lose to MSTs, but he kept seeing, he kept seeing twin twisters. So, I mean, like, better have it. Or he just kept setting the Raigeki to, like, try and intimidate me into making certain plays. But it doesn't matter, man. I draw Twin Twister. We play these cards. But anyway, that was just a little fun match that I wanted to play with Demol. Played it. And I've got a few more of these sorts of videos coming out because I really like playing more roguish decks, more roguish strats and stuff like that and trying to you know make them better in whatever way possible and i think the symphonic warriors like i said earlier in the video really complement this deck because one they just mesh super well all being machines uh the fact that symphonic warrior mics gives you the additional normal summon just for the rest of the turn it doesn't have to stay face up is huge as far as space constraint wise goes you can summon it and then you can overlay with it into your cyber dragon nova into your cyber dragon infinity and you still maintain that extra normal summon because of the way its effect is worded it is different from seraph knight seraph knight's effect is as long as it's face up on the field you can conduct an additional normal summon in addition to your normal summoner set with mike's its effect is after this card is summoned you can normal summon one card in addition to your normal summoner set per turn so after it's been summoned its effect just applies and if it leaves the field you still get your second normal summon which is a huge thing i absolutely love what symphonic warrior mics does as far as a card and the fact that it's a pendulum and can be pendulum summoned from the extra deck or from your hand is actually just a huge factor as well it just happens to be the right level being a level five as well uh, being a level five machine it just happened to be the right attribute type and level, <laughs> like the card, and to happen to have a relevant effect. Like that card is just amazing for this deck in specific, like in a specific amount of particularness. Uh, but anyway, that was just my little, uh, my little experiment. I plan on doing one more video at least with this Deskbot Symphonic deck, just because I really like Deskbots. I really, really like Deskbots as far as an archetype, because like I said, I love the power output. I love the power ceiling. The consistency may not be the best, but the power ceiling is a is ooh. Ooh, a cut above the rest. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, any suggestions you'd make to the deck as well are something that I'd probably welcome. Good suggestions are something that I would definitely welcome. But anyway, other than that, as usual, like, comment, subscribe to all that nonsense. Links are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It helps make future content possible and all that sort of nonsense. And it also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of this month for a box of Maximum Crisis that I'll be giving away as soon as the boxes hit store shelves. So if you want to support the channel and enter a fun little thank you giveaway sort of thing for your chance to win a free box of Maximum Crisis, then definitely check out the link in the description and go check out the reward tiers. And especially if you want to talk to me on an unlimited basis daily 24 7 and also play me in games for these videos then definitely check out the reward tiers if you are interested in getting into my private discord server with me and 17 others that are currently just doing nothing but shooting the shit and playing games of Yu-Gi-Oh on a daily basis so there's that but other than that if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards then definitely check out second chance gaming's website which is also linked in the description they are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and i'm a big fan of how they do business what i've had to deal with thus far both their pricing and shipment are both very top-notch from what I've dealt with and experienced thus far. So definitely check their site out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching again, as always. Thanks for your time, as usual. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.